Hey, how you doing? This is Jordan Todman here, seven-year NFL vet, uh, just to share my life journey and some, some knowledge with you. I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts, started playing football at the age of eight, fell in love with it immediately. Throughout that journey, I uh, made great family, friends, uh, brothers, and, and throughout that, that I would lean on and I would need throughout my journey. Uh, I grew up in the inner city in the hood, projects, section eight. Uh, we struggled, welfare, WIC, EBT card, public transportation. My mom didn't have a car, no license. So walked or ride my bike to practices or games or, or asked for rides from parents, whatever I needed, to, whatever I needed to do. Um, now, growing up in the city, I feel like in the uh, inner city, you know, we find forks in the roads around, you know, middle school or in you know, that high school area. It's uh, some people choose, you know, is it, am I, am I going the sports route? Am I, am I going the streets? Am I, am I going, am I academically sound? Am I going to college or am I just going through the motions? And um, I was, I was definitely chasing my, my, my sports dream, but, um, where I came from, there wasn't a lot of successful people around me, right? Uh, I didn't go out of my house and see a bunch of people with a shirt and tie going to work or not a lot of my friends' parents had, you know, great jobs. So growing up in the inner city, I feel like, you know, back then, at least in the, in the 90s, you know, to be successful uh, in the projects or in the hood, your, your dreams were to be a professional athlete or a rapper or, or something like that. And, and I chose I chose sports. Um I uh, was going to school, hanging out in, in my hood and, and representing, you know, my, my, my side, my side of my hood, shall I say, and going to middle school with, you know, getting in trouble here and there, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I came home one day and I uh, see my mom crying and I'm like, you know, my mama's boy and uh, just like most of us. And I'm like, mom, mom, what's, what's wrong? Like, why are you crying? She's like, baby, you kicked out. I'm like, what? They're kicking you out of school. Like, no, nah, ma, they're just trying to scare you. Don't believe it. Like, no, nah, like you're kicked out. So me, you know, being hard headed that I am, I didn't believe her. So next day I try to go to school and I'm like, nah, sir, you're not welcome here. You're kicked out of school. I get back home. I'm pacing back and forth. I start to cry. And I'm like, man, I got to call somebody. Um, I called my best friend, Justin. He said, you want to talk to my mom? I'm like, your mom? Yeah, I, I called to talk to you. Uh, within three minutes, uh, I get on the phone uh, with his mom and she offers for me to move in. And I'm like, what? This is this fat, it's just like that, you know? And, but first things first, I got to run that by my mom. And, and so my mom realized it, it would have been, uh, I needed a fresh start and probably the best thing for me. Right. And, um, and that, that's what I had to do. So uh, I went there, I'm attending school, no problems, no, no suspensions, no fights, uh, grades are good and uh, getting letters from schools. Um, and then deciding, you know, what school I'll choose to go to college and hopefully soon. Uh, prom shows up. Uh, here comes prom. Going to prom. Uh, dating a girl and no prom. Good kids on the bus. They uh, say somebody brought alcohol on the bus. Okay, so get to the prom. And uh, big thing, got to do breathalyzer to get into your prom. And my date failed the breathalyzer test. Uh, I go to I go to just, just, to, just to, you know, calm her down. She's crying. Had flipped a chair and um, I, I consoled her like this. And um, cops come and, and, and arrest us both, you know, put us in handcuffs. So, you know, I'm in the holding cell. Inevitable at the end of the day, go ahead and get arrested at prom. Can't believe this. Disorderly conduct, say interfering with arrest. Now I'm like, what? I, I just came from so much of a struggle. The, the, the ups and downs, the obstacles I had to get around just to get here, knowing I can't afford school. My mom can't afford school. This scholarship is what I need. Like, I can't, I can't be stuck here. I got to make it out, right? Thinking, you know, it's over. Everything I worked for is gone. Uh, scholarship and then blessing that I got the call from UConn. And, and Coach Edsel, who, who stuck with me and, and allowed me to keep my scholarship and, and, and make it through just to, to make this dream even possible. The, some of the biggest things I can give you or I can tell you most importantly is dream. And when I say dream, I say dream big. 